Well, um, my name is Talia Greenberg, and I'm talking to you about house plants today, um, and just a handful of the plants that I have in the house. Um, Mia, she volunteers with Eight Ball, and she's my assistant today. Um, this is also just really general, basic information on these plants. Um, nothing that no one else can find out or learn. This is all just what I've learned through working at a plant shop um, and just through experience. So it's really accessible information. Um, you can dive as deep as you want into it or you can just keep it at like the most general you know, level. Um, so hopefully this workshop inspires you guys to want to know more about plants um, and maybe have some house plants of your own. So we're gonna start with one of my favorite plants. Um, this is a Pilea peperomioides. And um, I've had this for maybe like six months or so. Um, it started off with just like four or five leaves as a sale plant. Um, so definitely feel like it was a steal. Um, it didn't grow too much in the beginning. Uh, I think because I got it in, in the fall and then it went through a dormancy phase um, in the winter, but now it's getting a lot of new growth. Um, some people call this the UFO plant just because of the shape of the leaves. Um, they're pretty succulent-like uh, along with like the, the petioles and they grow on a stalk. Um, so the stalk grows from the top and all the new leaves grow from the top um, and will get larger and the leaves will fill it out. Um, but these are nice because they do hold some water in the leaves and in the petioles. So you, you, know, you don't have to keep the soil moist or anything. Um, they actually do kind of like to dry out. So you wanna give it like a week um, you know, depending on the lighting, you want to give it a week in between waterings. You want to make sure that it's drying out. Um, they do like a bright indirect light. I keep mine on my desk and this is the east facing window. Um, and it gets sufficient lighting. I have, you know, my roommates have a couple, um, that are getting even more light right next to the window, but um, so sometimes I'll swap them out just to kind of even it out. And then I'll also rotate the plant so that only, you know, it's not only one side facing that or getting sunlight um, at a time. It's, um, you know, it's getting even lighting and even growth. So that's why I really like this plant. Um, it's, it also grows rhizomes. So it's basically like an extension of the plant, but underground. Um, it's a stem that produces roots and grows a whole separate plant, uh, like separate. Um, so that looks like this. You see how these are growing separately. Um, they're all attached to the mother plant, but they can be torn off and propagated to um, have its own, you know, its own pot. So this was a propagation um, of one of the babies and it's now its own mother. <laughs> okay, so on to the next one. Um, we have <laughs> this. Stand up and hold it. No. Okay. Um, we have this philodendron chordatum. This is a very, uh, in my opinion, basic house plant. It's a great one to start with because it requires, um, you know, it doesn't require a super bright light. It can be in more of a medium to lower light, but it can also be in a bright indirect light. Um, this one is a little bit sparse. They can get really full. This one's a little sparse because of the lighting situation. It's not in a super bright light. Um, but these are really fast growers. Um, like I said, the lighting is really flexible. So you can put it really anywhere in the house. You can move it around. 
Um, and then the watering is gonna be about once a week. Um, they vine, obviously, and they're just really easy to take care of. Um, and they're easy to propagate. You can, these might even have started as propagations. I'm not sure, it's my roommates, but it's just a good, a good plant to start with. Okay, so then next I'll talk about um, my succulents. Yeah. So I'll be talking about caring for succulents and cacti because the care is going to be really similar, um, if not the same. Um, so this is one of my favorite plants. It's an aloe. I really like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really like it because I got it as two clippings from a coworker at the plant shop that I worked at. Shout out to Flora Plant Shop in Nashville. Um, <laughs> and they've just grown a lot over the time that I've had them. Um, I think because I've been giving it a lot of good lighting in my east facing window in the living room. Um, and they're just, they've gotten a lot of new growth. They're really sturdy and cushiony and um, they feel really like anchored into the soil, which um, makes me feel better about it. So these, this is a Haworthia. Um, I can, I don't know, I think it's a cactus, but it's also kind of looks like a succulent. So either way, the care is the same. Um, they like a bright light. It can be direct and indirect. Direct is good too. Um, you can put them outside in the summer if where you live allows it. Um, but really the main points of the care is bright light, um, you'll water about once every two to four weeks. In the winter, it's definitely going to be once a month just because they do go through like a dormancy period and they're not getting all of that light that they want um, to really grow so um, and to dry out the soil. So really, you're going to water it um, two to four weeks depending on the lighting. So in the summer, I, I do it about every three weeks just because I'll forget about it. They're, they're pretty neglect tolerant, so um, I'll forget about it and then just water it you know, after a few weeks. If I ever see that it's shriveled, because um, they do hold water in their leaves, if I ever see that it's shriveled, then I know that it needs water because it's using up its water reserves in the leaves. Um, and also when I water it, I make sure to focus around the plant on the soil line because any water that's sitting on these leaves, it's going to cause some rotting. Um, they're just really sensitive to that, so it's something to be mindful of. So yeah, these are... <laughs> And then now I'm going to talk about um, my low light plants. Thank you, Mia. Some of these are really tall. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so these are my low light plants. This is my roommate's ZZ plant. This is my um, collection of snake plant leaves that I've propagated. And basically uh, what I did to propagate is I just took leaf cuttings. Um, either one of the leaves fell off of the main plant. Either way, what I did is I took the plant cutting and, That's fine. okay, I took the plant cutting and soaked it in water until they grew sufficient um, root systems. So it took a while, it took months. You know, and I just put them in the window. Um, so I just recently oh, potted right. these. Says your audio is cutting in. Now. I can't hear you. Um, Can okay. You hear Sorry, we're trying to. It's better now. Better now. There was okay. a. We missed a. Could you repeat what you were saying about the snake plant about the gutting? Yeah. 
Yeah. Sorry. So I just took the cuttings and I put them in a bottle with some water. Um, not, you know, filling. I didn't want to cover the whole leaf with water or anything, just the bottom part of the leaf. And after months of them being in water and me, you know, refilling the water once they've um, used it all up, they've grown pretty good root systems. Um, and I just recently potted these in here. And I did use a little bit of compost to fertilize. Um, and these are different species. So this one is a Sansevieria Laurenti, whereas this one is a Zeylanica. And this is kind of just my experiment. Um, not really sure what's going to happen. I am hoping that like it's gonna combine a hybrid or something. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. Um, and these are gonna be watered every two to four weeks, um, depending on the lighting. So whereas with cacti and succulents, they need a bright light. Um, these snake plants and ZZ plants, they can do a low light up to a bright indirect light. Um, if I had it in a bright indirect light, I would probably water it in the growing season every two weeks, whereas in the winter, um, probably all around, I'll water them, you know, every once every four weeks. Um, but in true low light spots, I'll stick to every, you know, three or four weeks within the growing period. Um, so... Snake plants do uh, purify the air. Um, that's something to look into with all of your plants because it's just an added bonus. Um, ZZ plants, so now I'll talk about kind of the toxicity between these, um, just to bring that up and create awareness when it comes to plant toxicity. Um, ZZ plants are poisonous. Uh, when ingested by humans or pets. So that is important to know because if you have a curious, you know, pet or um, a baby that's could get into, <laughs> into the plant, um, you will have to call poison control probably. So that's something to always think about when you're buying plants, indoor or outdoor. Snake plants are toxic. They're not poisonous, so it's just less severe. Um, it'll probably cause some, you know, vomiting or irritation in your stomach or esophagus um, when ingested. So being aware of that, if you want to have all of your house plants be non-toxic, not poisonous, um, then you can do that. You just have to do a little extra research. Um, parlor palms are, and bamboo palms are great for that. Um, but sometimes cats will eat them if, you know, if they can. So that is just a brief introduction to plant toxicity. Which one was on the left? Um, it doesn't matter. Okay. And now I'm going to talk about air plants. Uh, I only have one, but I love it. And it's really small. I have it in this artistic um, <laughs> holder that someone made for me. And um, yeah, it just, it's to show that you can really display your air plants in so many different ways. Uh, you can get super creative with it. Um, with the air plant, these are really cool because they don't need soil to grow. They don't need roots to grow. Um, they are epiphytes, so they attach themselves to other things, um, whether it's a tree or a vine or a rock. Um, they will attach themselves and get their water and nutrients from the air. So they like a bright, indirect light. They like a place with some pretty good air circulation but they also want some humidity. Um, and to water it, what, what I do is I soak it. I soak it once a week in a cup of water and I make sure that it's totally submerged. And I leave it in there for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, 
after I do that, I shake it out and let you know the water droplets come out of the crevices. Um, sometimes I'll just place it like next to a window if it's warm out and a little bit breezy or like a fan. And I'll just place it like that so that it really lets it um, dry out. You don't want any water sitting in into the crevices because it'll cause some rot. Um, and once I do that, I maybe for like half an hour, 15 minutes even, I'll just put it back and it's display and um, yeah, just that's all I do. And I missed it every once in a while. Um, it, these are great for like terrariums because they don't require any soil and they do like that humidity. So any sort of like glass um, container will be a great way to provide a humid environment for your air plant. Um, so hopefully this inspires some creative display techniques. <laughs> um, and speaking of misters, this is a great tool to have. Um, this one's just plastic. I think you can get them at like a grocery store. Um, but it's nice because it will provide your tropical plants with the humidity that they want. Um, you don't need to spray your cacti and succulents or your snake and ZZ plants because they don't want water sitting on their leaves or on their body. Um, they're really sensitive to that and that will cause rot. So just with your tropical plants, you can give it a little mist um, and that'll just provide some, some humidity for it. Sometimes I'll even keep certain plants in the bathroom while I shower. Um, and let them soak up humidity in that way. Um, but that's just a nice tool to have, along with a watering can, which I don't have. Um, I think those are like all of, well, I can talk about Um, okay. Well, those are all the ones we had planned out. We can talk about more, but, um, if anyone has any questions. Yeah, if you have any questions, please ask me. Can I can also talk going. about, you know, different um, pests or things to look out for, like sunburn. Um, this Monstera in the back right here. Um, this Monstera in the back right here, it has sunburn. Okay, we'll just get into that one second. Okay. Um, okay, cool. We have a good amount of time, so we can talk about that. So one of the things to look out for when you are placing your plants into a sufficient lighting is, is it getting too much direct sun or, um, you know, is it getting the right amount of direct sun or is it just getting indirect light? So one of the ways to tell, this is a Monstera, it's a philodendron. Um, so it's in the same family as the philodendron chordatum. Um, so they are good with similar lighting, a medium to bright indirect light. This one got too much direct sun. So this is what the sunburn looks like. Um, the leaf is you know, it's damaged, but it's not dead. Um, you can cut it off if you'd like, but you don't have to. It's just brown. <laughs> um, but this is what a sunburn looks like. And if any of your plants are getting that, it is something to consider. Maybe, you know, taking it a couple feet back away from the light source, um, because this is an indicator that it's getting too much direct sun. So I keep this next to the east facing window. And this was actually a cutting um, which sprouted a new leaf just recently and it looks so good. But I always thought it was so ugly because of the um, sunburn. But as you can see, it's still growing, it's still doing well, um, but the sunburn is just now um, a permanent spot. So that's something to be aware of. Can you also talk about what is, what is your favorite plant? Um, yeah. 
Okay, we're gonna talk about. Wait, not yet. Oh. Um, along with sunburn, something to be aware of is root rot. If you are overwatering your plant and the soil is staying really wet and it's not getting a lot of sun, all of those are a perfect combination for your plant's roots to just be rotting um, because they are staying so moist. So what you can do to prevent that from happening is making sure that you are watering it more carefully. Um, it's really easy to just like dump water in there and not realize, you know, that a specific amount might be best. But take your time and use a measuring cup at first and eventually it'll get a little easier. Um, if you have a drainage hole, then what you can do is you can water it until some drains out of the hole into the saucer. That shows that you've you know, saturated the soil and you've let it reach the roots. Um, but if you have like a, um, if you have a pot without any drainage, what you can do is you can kind of um, start with, we usually suggest, or we're at the plant shop I worked at, we usually suggested about a third of the container size, but that can sometimes be hard to figure out. So with, you know, let's say a container that might hold three or four cups, you'll probably want to give it one to one and a half cups of water when you water it. Um, so it takes a second to figure out. There are also devices that you can use to um, keep track of soil moisture. And those are really great to use because it'll help you stay in tune with kind of the, um, just the ways of watering um, and how often you'll want to water it. Things are going to not dry out uniformly. So some might dry out sooner than others. It's just, it's always good to have a better understanding of um, what your plants need. Um, with this plant, <laughs> this is a Peperomia ripple. Um, this one, it's really small and it has pretty short stems. You should hold it closer. Um, it has pretty short stems. So sometimes it can be hard to like get all the water in there without it leaking over. And I, I keep this next to my bed, so I want it to stay pretty neat. So what I'll do is I'll put water in the saucer and I'll sit this in the saucer and soak up that water in about five or so minutes. Um, and I do that, I keep refilling it up until the surface is a little bit moist. Um, that's just another great way to water your plants. And it's fun because you can actually see it soaking up the water. Uh, I find it really great for any really small plants or plants like succulents and cacti that you don't want, you know, some succulents are just so cluttered, you kind of have to, there's no way of avoiding getting water on the actual leaves. So um, it's good to, to, it's a good strategy for getting around that and um, watering your succulents sufficiently and um, keeping your plant untouched and not really bothered. So that's what I do with this plant. Um, do you wanna say like more about the actual plant? Yeah, so this plant is a mm -hmm. tropical plant. Um, it's used to some canopy over it, so it really doesn't need much of a bright light, um, or it doesn't need any like direct light, but it does do well with a medium to bright indirect light. Um, they, this is my first time having one, and it's grown a lot since I first had it. The new growth is really small, um, but I keep it in my, uh, oh yeah, I keep it in my west facing window. So it gets a lot of afternoon light and I think it's doing really well. Um, I water it about once a week. It dries out fairly quickly just because it is in such a, a small pot and it's getting a pretty good amount of light. Um, 
but it's really easy to care for. And once you kind of get started with houseplants, then you'll realize that the care is, it's really basic. Um, and you can really get deeper into it if you want. So, you know, with this one, if I wanted to do more research, I could look up, you know, its native environment um, and things like that. Want to do one more plant? Sure, we can talk about one more plant. Well, um, I'll talk about this uh, lipstick plant. It's called, it's just called a lipstick plant. I don't know the scientific name, but I wanted to show you this because it is in bloom and it's called a lipstick plant because these look like little tubes of lipstick. Um, <laughs> but uh, these actually like to be watered. They like a bright indirect light and they like to be watered um, more like once every two weeks. So they really do like to dry out and they're pretty sensitive to overwatering. So watering every two weeks is great and I keep it right in this window. Um, and this is actually a plant that I'm plant sitting for someone who had to go home. And um, yeah, it's just doing really well. It's, it's really bright green, which I haven't seen before but the ones that we had at the shop were a little bit darker, um, but they have pretty waxy, succulent-like leaves, and um, yeah, they're really floppy and full, and I just love these blooms. Cool. Um, yeah. Right. Awesome. Um, I think if, oh, we have a question. Oh, yeah. So with pest control, um, the common pests that I know of are mealybugs and scale um, and then fungus gnats. So mealybugs are like little white fluffy bugs um, that will like come in with a draft. I don't know, but they will find a place anywhere and they will just in invade your plant. Um, so you want to pay attention and make sure you're checking up on your plants routinely in case of any sort of pests. Um, but it'll just be a concentrated area, usually in crevices or underneath the leaves of, it looks just like white fluffy dust, but they're actually mealybugs. And what I do to control that is use neem oil, E-E-M. Um, it is a all natural solution um, that you can buy as a concentrate or as a solution. Uh, I recommend getting it as a concentrate just so you can buy that one bottle and have it for a while. And what you do is you mix it with water and soap so that it emulsifies in the water. Um, and you'll just spray down your plant. Um, you will spray a paper towel and wipe off every surface that has a mealybug on it. Make sure you get into those crevices, spray the crevices, um, and you want to isolate that plant from your other plants. They will pass over really easily. I was okay. Um, does anyone else have any more questions? I can go into that a little more um, mm -hmm. if we have the time, but if not, then. We have like a minute. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, I recommend just using neem oil for really any of your pest needs. Um, with fungus gnats, you probably have them because they're just everywhere. Use a solution of one parts hydrogen peroxide, four parts water, um, and that, and you spray it on the soil before you water it. So those should be pretty good. Um, obviously, look more into that just in case, but that should be pretty good. Thank you guys so much. I hope that you learned some things. Um, I'm not an expert, but anyone, you know, can get to my level of knowledge really easily. So this would be the perfect time to do so. Um, get some houseplants, guys. Yeah. <laughs>